When you say yes to God, miraculous things begin to happen. The changes in me are nothing short of absolute miracles. I mean, I am a wimpy chicken, girly girl, and to know that this wimpy, girly girl is now willing to take risks, is nothing short of miraculous. But that's what the Bible says. That's what happens to us. God is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask or hope. Matthew 9, 28 to 30, Jesus asked some people, do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him we do. Then he touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, it will happen. And suddenly they could see. What I love about those verses is it says just average ordinary people have the ability, have the opportunity to have the miraculous. We tend to think that it's only just the superstars, the great athletes, the really beautiful people, the people that are just incredibly talented. They're the ones that see miracles in their lives. But the Bible says that that's available to all of us. And in fact, Jesus ties it in that one passage to faith. He says, do you believe that miracles can happen? Because it was going to be a miracle. This guy was blind. And he said, do you believe it? And they said, yes. And so then when, he, when they said yes, it released Jesus to actually perform a miracle so that something happened in them that wouldn't have happened any other way. You're probably saying what I say, that could never happen to me. I am just an average, ordinary person. There's no way that those kind of miracles could happen. But the truth is when you surrender, when you say yes to God, when you say, my life is yours, I'm willing to do what you want, I'm willing to be yours, I'm willing to take the risks, that yes opens the door to miracles for average, ordinary people. So by the time I hit my early 20s, I was really pretty discouraged by who I was, how average I had turned out to be. I wasn't really happy with my life. And then I made this fatal mistake. I married a superstar. I married a man who did everything exactly right. Everybody thought he was great. He had this tremendous speaking ability. And I just, I kept thinking, why did I, why did he marry me? Why did he marry just this average person? And then we started Saddleback. And my goal shifted to from being you know, beautiful, talented, and um, really great at school to I'll be the best pastor's wife. So that was my goal. And it didn't take very long before I figured out again, you know what, I'm just average. I don't know how to do this. Rick should have married somebody who knows the Bible better than me. He should have married somebody who, you know, can quote it forwards, backwards, upside down, sideways, and, you know, in three different languages. But it wasn't me. I just, I didn't fit the bill. And a few months after we'd started, I was teaching a, a, a Mother's Day something for some ladies. They asked me to do it. And I remember driving in my car crying and just moaning and, and griping at God and saying, why didn't you make me prettier? Why didn't you make me more talented? Why didn't you make me better at this pastor's wife thing? And I don't really cry pretty. I'm crying. And all these, you know, my eyes are getting red and looking really bad. So I thought I'd distract myself and I turned on the radio and there was this song playing on the radio. And it was a song called Ordinary People. And the words are something like this, God uses ordinary people. He, he chooses people just like you and me who are willing to do what he commands. He chooses people who will give him their all no matter how small their all might seem to be because little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. That was one of those pivotal life-changing moments for me because I stopped groaning and complaining at how God had made me and began to actually celebrate. And so I began to say, God, I don't have very much in my hand. I really don't. You know I am so average and so ordinary. And what I feel like, I feel like my lunch is like tuna sandwich and somebody else has got a gourmet deli sandwich and I've got a little tuna fish here. But God, it's what I have and it's what you've given me. So I'm gonna give it back to you and would you do something miraculous in my life? And that saying yes, that day started the miracles. I'm not the same person I was. God has begun to do miraculous things. He took what to me is just the smallest lunch, has multiplied it and made something that I never thought would happen in my life. And it has nothing to do with me. What has changed is when I said yes to God. That allowed God to do something miraculous with what I gave back to Him. And that's the really good news is, you know, you can think about dangerous surrender and we talk about heroes and courageous people and it requires people who will be adventurers. And you say, that's not me. I'm not that kind of a person. I just want you to tell you, you don't have to be that. What you do is you give God what you have, who you are, who you're not, who you'll never be in your wildest dreams. You give that lunch to Him. And then you watch and you see the miracles that God will do when you say yes.